his months. Max Wonderlack. Championships where Sufi lost out. And Lechner, of course, runner-up at the US Open, the other of Max the Lechner. two biggest titles in the sport. Yeah, and it was both to Francisco, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, so they've got a bit of common ground. Well... That is quite a way to start, Carl. Yeah, look at this. The cue ball comes off the side rail and hits the nine ball perfect. We'll get another look in a moment. Well, that's one way to settle the nerves. Here's another look. Watch the cue ball. Look at that. It was going near the side pocket, the cue ball and all, but... Yeah, the red three ball may have just stopped the cue ball, but this is what can happen. Sufi knows this. This is part and parcel. The game of pool. Yeah, if you're not familiar with the game and you're wondering what's going on here and why the opening rack is finished already, remember, so long as you hit the lowest value ball on the table first, any pot is legal and keeps you at the table. And if that happens to be the nine ball, you've won the rack. It's the golden break. It's very, very rare we see someone do it in the very first shot of the match. I think we had it in Fulda last year. Maybe it was filler in one of the matches there. And that is one of the cruel things about nine ball, Mohamed Sufi, just sitting there and taking it. He hasn't hit a shot yet, and he's already one nil down. Well, that really is an extraordinary way to start, and Max Lechner, very swiftly, finds himself back at the table already leading. Yeah, that's okay. At first, he would have thought it was going to be a dry break, but you can see the yellow one ball tracks over, falls in the corner. And that little eight ball nudge on the blue two has set up this rack. Max Lechner will be 33 later this month from Austria, currently ranked number eight in the world. And someone, Carl, who has had a pretty good career up until now, but my feeling about him is his best days are actually still ahead of him. What do you think? Yeah, I said that at the, uh, the start of this match to James. I think there's players that have, you know, won these tournaments and they feel quite relaxed at these major events. I know Phil has just lost, but he's won so much in the sport, as has Niels. But Max is, is in that next bracket where... They've seen all these other players win the big tournaments and they want to do it. And, you know, he got so close, didn't he, getting to the final of the US Open? And it's amazing how little things can kind of mean so much. Yeah, got off to a good start in that US Open final. Come through an absolute thriller against Ko Ping Chung in the semis, winning that in a hill hill finish. Sanchez Ruiz just finished that bit stronger, though, in the title match and won 13-10. And there were huge implications for Lechner. Aside from the title, had he won that match, he would have been in the Moscone team. Yeah, that was OK. He left himself a wider angle than he wanted, but it was just a case of playing it slow enough. The pocket will swallow the ball up. Winner breaks here, so... This will be the second rack on the spin for Max, and we're going to see a big package put together here. I think one thing he has evolved into over the last couple of years is going from a player who shows his form and his potential in some tournaments to someone who's doing it on a very consistent basis in the biggest events. This is about as quick as you will ever see a player get to 2 0 in front. Mohamed Sufi still hasn't That's got out of his chair. Lechner very happy. Let's hear from him. I'm 
feeling very excited. I'm well prepared. Had a good uh, practice session the last couple of weeks. My game is on the top at the moment. I um, think I've never been better than I am. Playing Mohamed is, is tough, I guess. Uh, we've played before. He beat me, I beat him. He had a great run at the World Nine Ball, so uh, will be a tough match. The World Pool Masters is one of the most prestigious events we have in our pool calendar. To be here still feels like, uh, yeah, very nice and very, very excited. I think I have what it takes to, to win it the first time, yeah, definitely. It's a big deal for Mohamed Sufi playing in this World Masters. He's got in here on the back of that great run he had in Poland at the World Championship, and he'll have been building up to this in recent weeks, but so far, that's all he's done is sit there and watch as Max Lechner eases into this early lead. mentioned his run to the US Open final but I also said he's been doing consistently well in the biggest events world championship quarter final 2021 and then again in 22 this year not quite so good but still a very strong run to the last 16 and as I think we mentioned a little earlier in the program quarter finalist in the world masters for both of the last two years Absolute precision required here in terms of racking the balls, and that's exactly what you would expect all the time from Marcel Eckhart. Yeah, the referees are so conscious they don't leave a gap behind the nine ball because often that means Break. the nine ball goes Leading towards still. the corner pocket straight away. So that's why the referees are under a little bit of pressure as well out there. Ball stroke. Ball in. Okay, so golden break in the first rack. Foul break in rack three. And Sufi is finally going to get to and the table. Started. Yep, Sufi will have been sat in the chair just biding his time. We'll have seen this before. He's done it to many a pool player as well. And now he's got his chance at the table. What's the layout like? The layout's okay. What I mean by that, there's no clusters, there's no balls to break out. Yeah, just to tidy up the point we were making there, you were saying about guarding against the nine going straight into the pocket. That's not meant to happen. If there is a golden break, it should only be in the circumstances we saw on the first rack here, where another ball kicks it in. Interesting shot coming up here because he's not had much table time. He's got to draw the cue ball back. It's very easy to get too much into it, but this is nice. Nicely done. This makes the next shot so much easier. This is the speed he plays. Don't, don't be thinking your TV's on fast forward. This is how Mohamed plays. Sees the shot, gets on with it. So Lechner racing away early on, but the scratch break. Has proved to be a mini, tur mini turning point at the start of this match. Extension, please. Mentioned his high speed, but taking his time over this one and calling the extension, one of which you're allowed in every rack. Didn't get a look in in the first two racks. Got his chance here, and Mohamed Sufi has won it. Lechner's lead is reduced to 2 1. Hero to zero in a couple of racks for Max Lechner at the start of this first round match. This was his first shot of the match, indeed of the tournament. A golden break in the opening rack. Went on to win the second as well, and was leading 2 0 when this happened. Scratch break in rack three. Mohamed Sufi finally got to the table, and from there, he ran out to close to 2-1. Now, we'll see him break for the first time in this race tonight. Thank you, Mohamed. The fourth rack, Mohamed Sufi to break, trailing by two racks to one. Sufi ranked number 12 in the world. Huge strides forward from a position of 74th at the start of 2023.
Very unusual style there, Mohammed. One of probably the only player you're going to see breaking with an open bridge. Tough to see if you can see the potting angle. The old red makes you look like you can see the blue too. But he's going to have an issue with the red three, even if he rolls it in. Yeah, he can pot that. Well, actually, if he can roll it in, could he play the three, the red three off the rail? Well, he's flinging the cue ball round. Nice little shot, this. This should be okay. Mm, doesn't look like there's a gap in between that six ball and the rail. From there it does, but the old red... Yeah, it's a bit tricky, this. He's looking at playing the three into the pink ball to pop the green six. Or is he going to go into the rail and then try and pop the six? It's a good shot. Couldn't really guarantee getting another shot. Mm. Here's another look. This is what you can do in nine ball. As long as you hit the lowest ball first, if another ball goes in, you stay at the table. And here we're going to see a jump shot. Extension, please. Yeah, that's another thing that viewers, particularly in the UK, would find unusual. If they're used to watching snooker in pool, you are allowed the jump shot. In fact, it's very much an integral part of the game. Need a little bit of luck where they finish, because he's not potted it. And he'll be delighted with that. That's okay. He's not left the bank. And he can't pop that ball in the side. So he will feel sat in his chair. Fairly happy. Yeah, he didn't play the bank. too thick because he wasn't playing that he's been fortunate <coughs> Sufi's just biding his time in this rack trying to stay in the rack doesn't want to leave Max anything easy you wouldn't think he's going to take the bank on into the left centre safety shot looks quite easy unless he can get the cue ball forward oh, there you see playing the hook played it well he's cut out the jump shot so Sufi's going to be kicking at this one Gap's not big enough for the jump shot. But this is a good view. One rail, but he's made content. a mess of it. He'd give up ball in hand. Ball in hand. Please start the clock. are in fine form so far this year. I mentioned last 16, which was a decent performance at the World Championship. Quarterfinals of a Euro Tour event in his home country of Austria last month. Thrashed Mario He 9-2. 8 4 down in the quarters against Wojciech Shevchik. Leveled at 8 all, only to lose out in a hill hill finish. He's been to the last 16 of a world ranking event in Tharagotha in Spain. Since then, a solid form so far this year, but he'll have ambitions of much bigger things. 
Yeah, you were saying then, Michael, this is what Max does. He gets himself to the business end. Very consistent at that. Surely one day the door's going to open. It does for every other player. Not many players just sort of burst onto the scene and win a big major. He has had a, it has happened, sorry, Philo and Philo Gorst. They won big majors at young ages, but you know, when you look at Sanchez Ruiz, it took him a little bit of time. just so hard isn't it when you look at who the current four or five best players in the world are and how good they are to try and break into that bracket and you might probably have to beat two or three of those players in the same tournament to win one of the very biggest titles it's such a massive ask but Lechner came very close in Atlantic City back in October That's made a good left. start here got Sufi hooked ruled out the jump shot that earned him ball in hand, and from there, he's restored his two-rack advantage at 3-1. Guys, can I, can I both remind you about the force will break? 32, as There's I was saying, his birthday coming up in a few weeks. Number I eight in the world. The force will break. That's both. It's not a warning, that run but just a reminder, please, yeah? Runner up of the runner-up finish at the it's, U.S. It's Open. Force will break. They have power. Now, what do you reckon is yeah, going on yeah, here? Item. Words being it's held. Kind of Run yep. Yeah, Marcel's just making players aware that they want to see the forceful break, that's all. Rather than giving warnings out, he's just telling them, don't forget to, you know, keep the the pace up. And if you're wondering why, it's just because we don't really like the soft breaking pool. It just doesn't look easy on the eye. We like to see the power break. But is there some way of defining that in the rules? Some way, you're looking at me like that's the most outrageous suggestion, but could you define it in terms of number what? of balls that hit the cushion, number of balls that come back up to that half, to the top half of the table? Is there any way you can nail it down or is it always going to be interpretation? Well, pool players, you know, us as pool players, we've found every angle and we've, we've tried every break rule and we've, we've thought of all that, but I think the big thing is when you're watching pool on TV, you just want it to be easy and obvious. So when you start adding little implications in, it starts to get a bit silly. But I remember years ago, I think they used to use the speaker, certainly before my time. But I used to, I kind of like that, you know, if we could get some sort of device to get that back in. It's another little graphic for the TV screen, seeing how hard the break. We have something similar in tennis, of course, for the serve, not to do with any rule or anything, but just to measure the speed of serve. So it's one option. His nickname, Mad Max, came up there in that graphic. He's in no way mad. He's one of the nicest guys you could possibly meet. And part of that great Austrian triumvirate, along with Alban Ocean and Mario He, who are great pals and support each other so much. They're all involved in this tournament. We'll see He and Ocean tomorrow. Max Lechner, the man on centre stage tonight, and he's leading 3-1. Yeah, watch the cue ball there. It goes off the side rail, back into the back. Oh, he's done it again. He's wow. done it again. Four breaks in this match, and two of them golden. And all of a sudden, it's 4-1, Carl. Look at the cue ball again. Yeah, it's pretty much identical. It is. And again, nothing wrong with it, because we did see a match, I think, last year in one of the other matchroom events where we had a succession of golden breaks and we felt there was an issue with the racking. No suggestion of that here at all. It's remarkable to see two so close together from the same player. Well, how frustrating is this for Sufi? Yeah, especially with the previous rack where he did have a visit. It was a a tricky table layout to be fair but he did have an opportunity but he's paid the price here two golden breaks this is the first one yeah there you see the cue ball just comes off he cuts the nine in the corner well, it almost looks like it's one is a replay of another one but I trust I trust us they are two separate bits of footage from rack one and rack five 
So four Rex one six. in extraordinary Max circumstances here. Leading the match by four Rex to one. So can he get his third? Oh no way! No way! Wow. This and Max Lechner has completed a rare hat trick. And all of a sudden he leads with the help of three golden breaks by five racks to one. Six racks in, and astonishingly, we've already seen three golden breaks, all by Max Lechner. Let's see them now. Again, compare and contrast, and it isn't hard to do because they all look remarkably similar. So this is the first one. Cue ball goes to the side rail, comes back across, thumps the nine ball in. That's 1-0. Later, it's 3-1. Then pretty much the same thing happens. So that's 4-1. And just a few moments after that, instant replay. Carl, this is really extraordinary. To see three golden breaks from one player in the first six racks of a match is remarkable enough in itself, but for them all to look like carbon copies of each other, you just don't know what to say about that. Yeah, this break rule has been in... Well, it's been in a year, I suppose, Michael, has it? It's about a year. It's around about folder time, so last August, I think we started using it. Yeah, and, and this is just, you know, all the players are going off the side rail back into the stack. We know that, but for this to keep happening, it's, it's insane. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, he, all I can say is he, he has really got that aim and, and everything down here. He must be aiming. <coughs> Look at this again off the side. <sighs> Look at that. Yeah, I'm just saying he's coming exactly off the same point with the same spin that, you know, he's slightly drawing the cue ball. That is, well, if he keeps doing this, put his name on the trophy, man. Yeah, hat tricks mean different things in different sports. I think it originally comes from cricket where you take a wicket with three balls in a row, and it still means that. In football, it's just three goals at any time in a match. Well, we called it the hat trick here when he'd made three in the match. That could have been a true hat trick. Three in a row. So close to it. Yeah, he could have took the nine ball on with him, Michael. <laughs> to win the tournament for that. Yeah, in other news, Sufi's 5 1 down. And he's had to sit there and witness all this. However, Joshua Filler was 5 1 up in our opening match, so. We just got to sit there and keep believing, you know, this match is not over. Especially now we go to race to nine, Michael. It just gives that player who's having a bad time out there that little bit more of an opportunity. You feel like you get an extra one or two chances maybe in a match. I think he's trying to play safe here. Yeah, that's what he's played. He couldn't pot the two. He's played a good shot as well. Sufi coming to the table now. He thrilled us all on the table with his remarkable exploits in Poland when he came so close to becoming the most surprising of world champions. He also enthralled us with his stories of how he came to be in Europe. You can see the Syrian flag next to his name there. And he has now been based in Dortmund Extension. for about the last six or seven years, and he was actually representing Germany for a while. He's been known as a player of potential for some years and just steadily improving, reaching new little landmarks. Nobody expected what happened in Kielsa. We see it in every sport car. You see someone come through as a complete outsider in one of the very biggest events to win it or get to the final. And then they just fade back into the pack. So the challenge now for Sufi is to back it all up and 
show us that actually it wasn't just a one-off and he's got the wherewithal to be at the business end of events consistently. Looks like he's slightly under it, the cue ball here. Should have been a lot further out in the middle of the table. Now he's got to play a little thin one. Can he hold for the combo? He can't, so he's going into the gap. It's not bad. This is a tester, though. Never looked in, did it, Michael? No, and that's the sort of shot that has not my day written all over it. Yeah, it was the previous positional shot to get on the pink four. That's where it was like to go wrong. Yeah, could have recovered the situation if he'd made the five, left it in the jaws. And there's an air of inevitability about what's going to happen next. Yeah, let's not forget it's a winner break format. So you know, only needs a three or four pack and you can be back in these matches. Well, Niels Fyen came from 5 1 down to win our first match this evening here in Brentwood. Mohamed Sufi was hoping this rack might be the start of, his do of him doing something similar. Instead, wins the wreck. And his miss. You'll have to have a word with the technical people about that. Leading by six wrecks to one. Okay. An air of anticipation like never before. I'm scared to watch. So Sufi. Yeah, just come a bit higher then. That's a poor break, that Max. <laughs> The game of nine ball, Michael, never seems to amaze you, does he? Sort of stuff you see on a, on a pool table. It's a relatively small playing area and only ten balls, including the cue ball. It's just incredible the things that can continue to throw up, things you've never seen before. to hold up so he can pop this in the side or has it run on a little too far it's close yeah that's fine isn't it yep it's fine 
Yeah, he might have to try and jack the cue up in the area. This is what he's looking at, just to pull the cue ball over. And the ball's near the rail. Extension, please. Can't go forward with the cue ball because the purple five is in the way. Yeah, these are nasty little shots, these. Whenever you're striking down. Max Lechner has been working really hard on his fitness over the last few years. He was at a tournament talking to another player, much lower profile, Gerhard Pardeller. And they got chatting and Gerhard was telling them he's very heavily involved in fitness and working out. So started working with them and particularly during the COVID lockdowns, put on about 10 to 12 kilograms. He was doing so much work at the gym and he really feels it's helped his game. Didn't help him much there though, Carl. He's run aground early in this rack. Yeah, a bit fortunate that the eight balls come into play. He was trying to get the cue ball up there, but he overhit the pink four. He didn't want it near this pocket. Well, Sufi's got to make some Extension call. Why not start now? It's going our ball. Now we will fancy potting this ball. It's just controlling the cue ball. It's going to start flying around. Needs a little bit of help here. It's fair to say the game's not really been kind to him. And he's got a bit. I think when he's been hit with three golden breaks, he's entitled to all the good fortune he wants for the rest of the match. He actually played the jump shot with a bit of right hand English there, trying to create a bit more angle to get on the next ball. I wonder if he's going to try and get the cue ball over towards the round seven. It's quite a big target. Oh, he went for the pot. Surprised at that one. Earlier on in the match, he played a good safety. And put the cue ball behind the eight, didn't Max? There you can see, you can see the potty angle. Just not happening. He was trying to put the nine full in the face, so the cue ball would stay around that area. You can see enough of the ball to put it in the side, but that is such a nasty angle from there. I was out having a look at the table, seeing how these pockets were playing. Good shots. When he lost his opening match at the World Championship to Mateusz Sniagotski, didn't look like it was going to be a memorable week for him, but got through two rounds on the loser's side and then beat Marius Skoneczny, Mika Imanen, Sebastian Bakovsky, Alban Ocean and Wu Kun Lin to get to that final. It really was an epic tale. Came up just short. And it's going to have to be another epic story here if he's to turn this around. But he's made a start there. Mohamed Sufi wins rack eight. He now trails 6 2. Now let's look in on the practice room, which is right next to the main arena here in Brentwood. Copin Yi and Jason Shaw, the former US Open champion. They will be along to round off our evening's entertainment once this match is over. Phil Yates and Jeremy Jones will be along to talk you through the action on that. Yeah, these two have had some big battles over the years. Jason Shaw in the Kuwait Open. And he was playing coping in one of the matches. It was either a race to 11 or 13. I can't quite remember, but coping was on the hill. And the score was something like 10-1. Jason come back and won. He's also done the same in the US Open. Berman family used to promote the US Open over in Chesapeake, America. And then obviously the World Nine Ball Championships, not the recent one, the one that. Yeah, the Milton Keynes last yeah, year, yeah. That went hill hill as well, mm. so they've got previous them too. Yeah, two genuine superstars of the game. Max Lechner 
He'll be well on his way to that status if he can keep going the way he has in this match, but he hasn't won it yet. 6-2 in front. First round will be played over this evening and then all of tomorrow. Friday is quarter-final day. Semis on Saturday afternoon and then the final Saturday night. Lechner, as we've said, quarter-finalist the last two years. Sufi in this event for the very first time. For only the second One time in this break. match, we're going to see him break. Training by six wrecks to two. Surprised he didn't put the cue ball where Max has been making. Oh, has he made one? He oh, has. you're kidding me. And the <laughs> other side. Wow, this is our fourth golden break of the match, Carl. One now for Sufi. And he's right back in this contest, you know. It's 6 3. Well, I promise you now, as you've tuned in to Nine Ball for the first time, this sort of stuff just doesn't happen, does it, Michael? No, and at times in the past, as we've said, it's been because there have been question marks over how the balls have been racked. There's no suggestion of that here, simply because the cue ball keeps going off that side rail. Or in Lechner's case, the other side rail, coming across, smacking the nine ball in the corner. And so, Mohamed Sufi is giving Max Lechner something to think about here. He's three behind now. It's six racks to three. Like a boxer who's been hit with a series of devastating punches, Mohamed Sufi picked himself off the canvas after Max Lechner's three golden breaks and delivered one of his own. He was 6-1 down in this first round match. He's now close to 6-3. And we have seen four golden breaks. And basically that one was just like Lechner's, but from the other side, Carl. Thank you, the break. Yeah, I mean, if you try to do that, break. honestly, he could be there all week. You can see on the replays, the cue ball comes off that rail and sort of arcs and then to hit the nine at the exact point to cut it in the pocket. Listen, we know this can happen because the players are coming off the side rail back into the pack. And yeah, there you see, it's nowhere near hitting the nine. So this is it's unusual what we've seen. It's almost a letdown now when we don't get one. Push off, oh, we'll be seeing a push out here because just look where the cue ball has ended up. If you're tuning in for the first time to nine ball pool after the break, the next shot you can play a push out. What that means is play at the table now, Sufi can roll the cue ball, he can hit another ball and leave it where he wants, this is what he's sizing up now but what he's got to bear in mind is after the shot, Max will come to the table, he'll have a look he'll have a play of the shot or he'll pass it back <coughs> this match has all been about Max really hasn't it but you know, all of a sudden from 6-3, Sufi can win this rack with the break next. He's, he's back in this. This is the beauty of moving it to a race to nine. Players get a little bit more chance to come back in a match. That's what we've seen against Filler and Fyan. He used to avoid the middle, which he has done. Yeah, good shot. are always looking for the best percentage Extension, when you get a ball. So he's looking, if we go to the left side of the table and I hit the two, what can really happen? Could maybe cut it in the corner pocket, but that's unlikely. So he keeps having a look at the right side of the table, but I think the eight ball's in the way. So he's forced into this. Got to make sure you hit the ball, that goes without saying. 
good things can happen. Good things have happened. Got to stay patient in nine ball because Sufi's had to sit in the chair and see all th all sorts of stuff going on here with Max's golden breaks and is the match just turning around a little bit? I had to feel a bit aggrieved with all those golden breaks, Extension but it'll cold. just have given him a little bit of a lift with his own one to see. Okay, Extension, nice please. things like that can happen to me too. And you see Lechner ahead on balls potted. Three of those, of course, were from the break. We're pretty close in that, despite the gulf and the overall score of the match. Controlled with the short stick there. Cue ball's always going to come away. Hit the eight ball full, left him a chance. Great memories for Lechner of his last visit to this venue for the World Cup last year when he got his chance with Austria and they were beaten 7 1 in the first round by Finland, playing alongside Alban Ocean. And he won't have great memories of that shot either, Carl. No, he's butchered that one to be fair, but the seven ball has come to the rescue, so he got away with one. But that will give Sufi, you know, a little bit of hope there. He knows that Max has missed the ball there and Sufi's back, but he's got to play a good kick shot here. Oh, he's done well. This is how he's played it. As the cue ball held up, maybe there's an edge. cut this red three ball in but the next ball is the purple five you can see that's near the nine ball down at the bottom so he's got to avoid the scratch in the middle yeah that's okay it's more than okay good shot remarkable to think Austria had that great run in the World Cup three times in a row in the final two of which they won the last two years they've lost 7-1 in the first round was referring to Lechner's involvement last year. Looking to improve on that this year, but he won't get the chance to be part of that because Mario He is back in the Austrian team. In the lineup with Alban Ocean in Spain. That'll be at the end of June, straight off the back of the Spanish Open. Those two events being played in consecutive weeks at the same venue. Yeah, when you think it's the top 14 players on the rankings plus two wild cards, the fact that there's three Austrians straight in off the rankings just Amazing. shows you how uh, how well these three are doing. And they all get on very well together as well. You know, they sometimes they house share at certain tournaments and they're always eating dinner together and hanging around. And you would probably think the other two are sat in the arena somewhere watching or they'll be somewhere to the TV screen. We can see Mario He there. I'm not sure. Is that Alban sitting next to him? I think it is. After that miss that he had, the one that Carl described as having butchered it, it was important for Lechner to win this rack, to put that mistake behind him. Max Lechner and wins the rack. Clear once again. Two away from victory now. That's 7 3. Well, Carl, you were asking when we had the first two golden breaks together, why can't we have all three of them at once? Well, you've got your wish, so take a look at this. This is the three golden breaks from Max Lechner earlier in the match, all being played together. And look at that. How similar are those? 
The cue ball ending up in quite similar positions, similar areas of the table. Even at the end of it, one more look at it. Max Lechner, three golden breaks in the match. All three of them being played together here. Just remarkable consistency of striking. If you could keep repeating that over and over, you'd win every match in every tournament. A bit like FSR does at the moment. Someone needs a pay rise backstage. That was incredible viewing, yeah. wasn't it? That was absolutely wonderful to see. And of course, we don't want to overlook Mohamed Sufi's achievement. Very similar thing, but from the other side of the table. This is what it would be like if robots played pool. And they'd just be programmed to hit the cue ball in exactly the same position every time, and we'd have an endless succession of golden breaks. <laughs> I wonder he's got a wry yep. laugh. OK. The 11th rack. Back to more pressing Max matters. Max Lechner is looking Leading for two more racks here to get through to the quarterfinals for the third year in a row. the blue two ball off the break so what that means is from this yellow one ball he's got to get on the red three ball which is near he's actually going to be bridging over it I'd like to play this in the corner really and just kind of stun the cue ball a little bit also looks like he could maybe play the yellow one on the green six I think a player would rather play in the corner. It's a bigger pocket, and he knows if he pops it, he will have a shot on the red three ball. Yeah, that's fine. Into the rail, we'll swallow the ball. I was talking earlier about the fitness work he's been doing over the last few years, and he feels it really has helped his game. He says more muscle gives you more feeling. And it was actually at the World Masters two years ago that he feels he has had his peak of physical fitness and he's tried to maintain it as much as he can since then. He'll often practice for three hours, then go to the gym, then go back and practice for another three hours after that. And recently, I know he's been trying a new regime, trying to do 30 hours practice in three days. He feels it's uh, something he's better equipped to do now because he is feeling more physically fit, but. He's seen the benefits in his game. Oh, what's he done with the seven ball, the brown seven? He just flicked it a little bit. I don't know if it potted previous to the shot. Extension, please. Yeah, he's taking a bit of time here. As you can see, the brown seven is tied on the eight ball, so he's going to be playing safe. He'll know how important this rack is and all, because if you get eight three up, you're in such a good position. Seven four, there's still a, a little bit. Of Meet on the bowl. It's a safety shot using the nine.
extension called. He was making something happen. He's held his hand up, but this is what he's going to need. Now he's going to be playing. Is he looking at the carom? Yeah, the carom oh. would be to hit the seven, come off that to then hit the nine, and hopefully pocket that. Well, he hasn't played it. Not quite got there, has he? So if Max can see enough of the seven, he'll play the bank. <coughs> That's what he attempted. Afterwards, if he wins this match, we'll be talking about all the golden breaks. That will be the headline, but shouldn't mask the fact that, other than that, it hasn't come easily to him in this match, and at times he's made harder work of it than he's needed to. It's close. It's close. It's there. Good shot there from Mohamed. He's going to need a good one here, though. Yeah, he can pot it in the corner, but where's the cue ball going to go? Looks awfully close to left centre. It's definitely going in that direction. Maybe it's going to go a little bit high. Yeah, it's definitely close. He's up and down. He's played safe. Don't blame him. Good safety shot as well. Look at the speed control. <coughs> yeah, cue ball was definitely going near the centre, so he decided it wasn't for him. The bank shot looks on. Up into the top right. Got to get the cue ball out of the way quick, so you don't... He had a double kiss. Oh, he's miscued. Wow. <coughs> well, once he'd done that, he needed a bit of good fortune. But really, after that shot, can't really feel he deserved any. And so, Mohamed Sufi Mohamed is clinging Sufi. on here. Wins the rack. Lechner will have to wait to get to the hill. It's now 7-4. Well, that was an eventful rack, Carl. Yeah, we've seen it all. Just listen to the sound on this miscue. You can see he had a lot of body movement as well, and that's what can cause the miscue. Any type of body movement, and the pool player always blames the tip. There he is, chalking it as if it was the tip's yeah. fault. Yeah, it's like the golfer who misses the putt and then walks away looking for non-existent spike marks over and over and over again. So, three golden breaks, but Max Lechner has still got work to do to get through to the quarterfinals here. And overall, I think we were raving about him early on. He's not going to be overly pleased with his performance, even if he does get through. Yeah, both players a little bit edgy out there. It would have been interesting to see how this match would have gone if Max hadn't have had these three golden mm. breaks. Yeah, Sufi's had one of his own, but you know, a golden break just offers such a fast, quick rack where you've not had to play many shots or positional shots. But Max won't care. It's all about trying to get through the first round. You know, the players have played in a lot of these tournaments, these type of tournaments in the in the arenas, in the World Nine Ball Tour. But you still you still never get used to it. It's, you always want to get out there and just get that first match on the bell. It's weird. It's just so different, isn't it, to being on the outside tables, which ultimately is you know, unless you're one of the very, very biggest names. 
where you play most of your matches at the big field open events at the world championship you're generally on outside tables appearances on the tv stage are actually quite rare and it still does take some acclimatizing to well that's sufi to break trailing by this seven it very four. well at the world championship earlier in the air and he still has every chance to win this match on his world pool masters debut he's seven four down oh the cue ball's going to go in it's going to spin False in shot. you could tell with the spin it had on the cue ball, ball it always pulls it into the corner pocket Started. His first scratched break of the match. They've now had one apiece. Yeah, just unlucky. The kick off the brown seven. Let's give Max ball in hand, and it's another chance to get himself on the hill. He wants to get quite far down the table, ideally to the left, but he sort of can't because the brown seven is in the way. Because the position from the blue two to the three would be easy, but if he lands on the right hand side of the the two ball, then the cue ball would crash into the nine. Extension, please. So he's got a little bit of thinking to do here. could see he was really trying to get over near the seven if he's straight on this he can draw back but he isn't because he's just come round to just make sure of this angle could run off two rails back out into open play oh this has all gone wrong surely he's not landed on that if he has landed on that put his name on the trophy michael that is unbelievable i've seen a few wry smiles from mohammed sufi sitting in his chair in this match I see the most extreme example of that, if indeed Lechner can find a way through to this three. <laughs> well, now he's just gone for outright disgust. Well, to land in that gap, that's more outrageous than the three golden <laughs> yeah. breaks we've seen. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. That is absolutely amazing. And you talked about standing there and trying to come off that side rail and put all those nine balls in the corner over and over again and not being able to do it you could have tried to put the cue ball in that position to find that gap all night long and maybe not managed it you even look at it now there between the six and the eight it's hard to see how you can fit a cue ball through there at all Let's just have a look at the good fortune he had to get into that position. You look there, you wonder, can you even fit a cue ball through there at all? And then can you get to the potting angle? Somehow he found himself in the position to do it. So rack 12 started with Sufi having his first scratch break of the match. And Lechner has ended up taking it to get to the hill. He leads Mohamed Sufi in this first round match by eight racks to four. Well, he's had three goldens, as we've already seen, and now when he needs one most, he's come up dry. Yeah, his last break of the match. 
And so, last chance for Mohamed Sufi. He's very much still in this match. He's Sufi, if he can win this rack. Oh, but you can't stay in a match and hope to pull off any sort of a fight back like this if you're going to miss balls like that. We've seen some mistakes from both players. This might be just about the worst of the lot. Yeah, just those building the comeback on there, Michael. Of course, the commentator's curse strikes. And what a horrible feeling it will be if he leaves the Brentwood Centre tonight with that as his last memory from his first appearance in the World Masters. Early rounds of tournaments in any sport, really, it's all about getting through it. But Lechner will know, despite all the attention of the golden breaks, that he'll have to play a lot better in some respects if he's to challenge the biggest superstars of the game to be a contender for this title. I was talking earlier about Lechner not being in the Austria team for the World Cup. Mohamed Sufi does have that to look forward to. He'll be there representing Syria along with Mohamed Aziza. We'll see plenty more of him before then, no doubt. UK Open and Spanish Open to come in the meantime. I think overall he'll want to forget this match. He did have his own big moment, the golden break at the start of rack nine. But look at the balls they've missed. We consider how many of the racks finished off the break. That is quite a high number in the end. Sufi's miss on the two, though, was the worst of the lot. And it looks as though it's going to prove decisive here. Extension, please. Lechner may just have used up his quota of good fortune for the week in this match. Most notably with those three Thanks golden Lechner. breaks. Matters in the end, though, is that he's through to the quarterfinals of the World Masters for the third year in a row. He's beaten Mohamed Sufi by nine racks to four.